Hello guys and welcome back to the 26th part of the Kotlin UV2 Pro series. In the last part we created a companion object with the function random circle. So if we take a look inside the circle class, we created a companion object here. And inside of that object we created a function that generates a random circle. And because that function is inside of a companion object, we now don't need to create a particular instance of a circle. Instead we can just write the class name circle followed by a dot and then call that function and assign the result of that function to an object circle. Sometimes we need to have an implementation of a class with a slight modification but we don't want to create a completely new class for that and in that case we can create what is called an anonymous class and this is what this video will be about. For that I want to remove that line here and jump into our shape class. So I want to provide a way to create custom shapes just when we need them, basically on the fly. And for that I want to overload the constructor of our shape class to provide many um, different dimensions of a custom shape. So you will see what I mean when I implement that. So I write constructor and of course we need to pass the name because we need to call the primary constructor of shape and that needs the name. So we need to pass that in the secondary constructor too. And now I want to provide as many dimensions as I want. So we could use a var arc here and call that dimensions. Oops, not that dimension. Dimensions and those are all double values. After that, as you know it, we have to call the primary constructor with this and we just need to pass the name here. So the cool thing with that constructor is now that we are able to create um, completely our own custom shapes on the fly. So let's go into our tutorials.kt file again inside the main function. And to show you that, I want to create um, an instance of a parallelogram. So I'll write val parallelogram and because our shape class is abstract we of course cannot um, create instances of it. So even though we overloaded the constructor here you can see we now have a different version of the shape and we can provide many more dimensions. So if we write parallelogram difficult word and then provide some dimensions. For that I want to um, create three sides. So we need the side A which I set to yeah, 3, the side B which is um, the diagonal side. So let's set that to 4 for example and we need to um, know the height of the parallelogram to calculate the area. Well, height is equal to 2. And now we can provide all those three sides to the constructor of shape. So A, B and height. But you see the problem of that. If we hold on to it, it tells us we cannot create an instance of an abstract class. And as I told you, we cannot do that. But we can um, basically create a temporary class of shape or a, not a temporary class, more a class that we can modify a little bit. So that does not look exactly like, like our shape class. Instead, we can um, add some functions, for example, or we can yeah, we have to create our own implementation of the area and the parameter function because those are abstract and we have to implement them. But we can, uh, we can um, add as many functions as we want and properties but we don't have to create a new class for that. So we don't have to um, create a new .kt file with that parallelogram um, implementation. So to do that, we have to write the object keyword before the um, constructor call, followed by a colon. And after that, we have to make two curly brackets. And inside of that, of those curly brackets here, 
we can put our class implementation. And as you can see, object is underlined in red because object is not abstract and does not implement abstract base class member area and also our parameter. So as I told you, because area and parameter are abstract, that means that every shape, so every class that is a shape, um, needs to implement those functions. And with that object notation here, we basically create an anonymous class. That is um, how it is called. So we create a class that inherits from shape and we can put all the modifications to that class inside of those curly brackets. But because that object inherits from shape, we also have to provide the area and the parameter function. So we have to define how to calculate the area and the parameter of a parallelogram. So to do that, I'll press Control O, that little window will open, and inside of that list you can select area, hold on Control, and also select the perimeter, and press OK. And as you can see, IntelliJ inserted those two functions for us. You can remove those two to-do statements here. And now we need to provide an implementation for those two functions. So we need to tell IntelliJ how our anonymous shape object, which is a parallelogram, how um, the area is calculated. And the formula for that is just a times the height. And of course, we need to return that. And for the perimeter, the formula is similar to a rectangle. So just two times the side A plus two times the side B. And just the way we did it for our subclasses of shape, triangle, circle, and rectangle, we printed some information in the, in the init block. We can do the same for our anonymous class. So let's go above here and write init. And inside of that, we can print a line, for example, that tells us that our parallelogram created with um, a is equal to a, b is equal to b, and whoops, and um, the height is equal to height, of course. And after that, we can print the area is, and then of course call the area function, and finally the perimeter. So print line, the perimeter is perimeter. So you can just um, access all those properties and functions that are defined in shape or in our anonymous class. So we could also create some other functions here that um, change our shape class a little bit. So for example, a function that checks whether that particular par parallelogram is a rectangle. So check, for example, function is rectangle that returns a Boolean. So either true or false. And it returns if the height is equal to our site B. If that is the case, then we know that this parallelogram is a rectangle. So that is basically the main reason you would create an anonymous class. So you have a class here that has all the properties of shape. So we could, for example, also call the, fun uh, the change name function here. We haven't defined that inside of the anonymous class, but because that object here inherits from shape and shape has that change name function, we can also access that change name function from within that anonymous class. And with those anonymous classes, we can just um, create our own new functions that usually don't belong to the shape class here and go after that closing curly bracket and we can call that function. So we could print a line um, is the parallelogram a rectangle and then print whether it is a rectangle. So parallelogram dot is rectangle. So let's run the program. And as you can see, it prints first I am the superclass, 
because we created an instance of shape here and if we take a look in the init block of our shape class we print I am the super class. After that it prints those three um, lines that we printed inside of the init block of our anonymous class and it also um, calculates the area and the perimeter correctly and after that we print the line whether that parallelogram is a rectangle and of course it's not a rectangle because we chose a different value for the height than we chose for the side B. Your homework is to um, create an, another anonymous class that describes a trapeze. So you need to provide the dimensions A, B, C and D and also the height of that trapeze and then just um, provide a function that calculates the area and the perimeter and just as we did here provide a function that checks whether that trapeze is a rectangle or not. Your homework from the last video was to extend the rectangle function with a companion object that provides a function random rectangle that just generates a random rectangle. So that function of course returns a rectangle here and inside of that body you have to um, randomly generate the sides A and the side B and then just return a new rectangle with those two sides. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope this was helpful for you. If so, please leave a like and a comment below. Also, if you have any questions, then don't mind asking them in the comments so I can answer them. And yeah, have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.